Hello and welcome to Impact Africa, our online Bold Wheels talk show where we get to have conversations with diverse people and organizations who are impacting lives positively. This is Mama K, Kemi Akiode Adebayo. And in today's program, I've got a very young, selfless change maker, Tahik Tofa, who is a founder and director of the Lahik Tofa Foundation, which is based in Delft, Cape Town, South Africa. Laik, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Mama. Okay, I'm excited. I am as well. I'm, I'm a very, little very, bit nervous. You're a little bit nervous. <laughs> no, you'll be fine. You, you'll be fine. I'm you, trusting. You're trusting. And you, you've done things like this before, but not in this setting. So tell us a little bit about who Laik is. Okay, I'm Laik Tofa and I'm 17 years old. 17? And you are tall? I hope not I grow any taller. How tall are you? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> okay, but I'm sure you're six something, you okay. know? Okay, so you're 17 and what grade are you in? I'm in grade 11 at Alsis River High. Right. And I'm also the founder and director of the Laik Tofa Foundation and we're based in Delft. Wow. So, at 17? Well, before we go on to 17 and Lahik Foundation, tell us a little bit about growing up in Delft. Were you born in Delft? Yes, I was born and okay. raised in Delft. I live with both my parents okay. in our family home. It's always been nice. I always, I love the community. I love living here. I don't imagine myself living in another area because I've got, gotten so used to living in Delft and I know so many people here. So imagine me moving to another area and right. not knowing anyone there. So I love- And what's your position in the family? Um, I'm the eldest brother. Eldest brother, okay. Yeah, and then I have two younger siblings, okay, okay. which is girls, right. sisters. So you're three? We're three kids, okay. yes. And I'm so the you're eldest. the eldest child? Yes, I'm the eldest child of three children. Ah, uh -huh, well you say eldest brother. Okay, so what you mean is you're the eldest child with two siblings after Yes, you. that's correct. Wow, and oh, at okay. 17, you founded, well, before 17, when did you start Lahik? Uh, Tofu Foundation. Okay. L and I love the brand, <laughs> Team LTF. Thank when you so did you much. start the foundation? Okay, so the, the, the Laik Tofu Foundation, I received the vision back in 2019, 12 okay. o'clock the night. So I was right. busy scribbling and writing this organization down. And then in 2020, I with COVID lockdown and level five, I got to tap into with working with people that were so active in feeding and nourishing kids in the community. Mm. And that's where I got the opportunity to meet people and to network and to share my vision and my passion. And that's how I formed the organization. Um, last year, I spent most of my days working in the community, building up experience, how to run an organization, what, what, what are the legal requirements, mm. what are the do's and the don'ts. So successfully on the 9th of September, I registered the organization. Wow. Well done. That was last year. So it's That's still a, your baby. It's very, very it's much very a baby. Young. Yeah. So you said you received the vision in 2019. So a lot of young people at your age, because you're 17, nine, so it means that was 15 when you were 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so young people at that age are probably thinking of their next jeans, their next top, or football, or, you know. But you received a vision to do what exactly? Um, my vision that I received was to work with children okay. and also provide a platform for them to come to the organization and th that I assist them with their schoolwork and also nourish them because the need is so great in our community for food. The mm. most Delft is a food insecure community. Hi. And even with the organization now, I'm seeing it weekly. So I knew that there was a need to nourish these kids and also mm. provide a positive role model for them. And yeah, so. Wow. So what does, what does, Team LTF, what does the organization, so it's a non-profit organization. Yes, that's correct. Um, what do you do? What's your goal? What's your mission as an organization? Okay, our, our mission is to provide destitute children with fundamental things okay. they need. 
So our main objectives are community development and we focus on children and the development of them through our developmental programs. So we run three of them, which is nutritional development, okay. educational development, which is our after school program and empowerment through recreational activities such as our arts and craft club clubs. So that will, the, the other two development programs will start soon. One of them is opening in the week on Thursday. So we've been feeding We've been focusing on the feeding objectives since we opened on the 16th of February. So how's the journey been for you and especially still being a grade 11, 11 learner in school with COVID, you know, disrupting everybody's lifestyle and studies. How's that journey been? How, how has that been for you so far? The journey has been really exciting. I just wow. love working in the community mm. some days. It, it is a bit tough because then I need to do so much and then there's nothing. It doesn't feel like there's enough time in the day to do everything. So <laughs> I end up feeling burnt out, but mm. luckily I managed to do everything. Um, I get everything done. So with your organization, uh, the NGO, do you have people, you know, who work? Do you have directors, volunteers? Yes, we are. We do have board members in okay. the organization. There's three How board many members. board? Okay. Three board members, okay. chairperson, treasurer, and then okay. secretary. Right. And then we also have a group of young people that volunteers at the organization and offer their time to us to help uplift the community. How many volunteers do you have so at the moment? We, there are five volunteers okay. at the moment. There's more applications that we need to work on. Right, you know, right. But just, even with five, that's a good start that's for a good start. you know an organization that is less than one year registered. Because you said September when was when you officially registered and you've got your brand name and you know I, I was you know watching your video earlier which we're going to show at some point of some of the projects you know you guys have done in Delft and I'm like wow he is so organized and he, he is really a, a lot now so who funds you at the moment so we don't receive any funding from okay. the government we source mm. act, I actively source for donations right we receive support from ShopRite become by um Jacob's Jam company that supplies us with jam and then right. we have individual donors that donates to us. No. We Rise Against Hunger supports us, the Anwar Jakut Foundation. So as we're growing each week, there's more people, more people coming on board. And sometimes I'm just surprised and people are starting to calling me they're calling me and say, Hi, can we do a feeding? And then I'm wow. like, You're welcome. Mm, Please come. Mm. And it's a good start. We are seeing donors coming on board. However, it is a lot of hard work. So We're getting there. I can imagine. So in the last um, less than a year, what is one success story for you that you think you've achieved? Or, you know, just one example. Starting the organization. Because okay. back in 2019, when I received the vision, I was dwelling. I didn't know how to start out, okay. what to do. So starting the organization is one of the greatest achievements that I've done because it, it's just amazing and it was what I wanted to do back in 2019 but COVID came as a blessing to me and so for you COVID was a blessing yeah I got to do so much yeah. I got to meet so many people so that's that's one good thing for me that I formed the organization and we uplifting the children and nourishing them so with the nutritional program that you spoke about so it's mostly do you advise the children on what they need to eat or what does that involve no, we run an active feeding program okay once, once a week so our goal, our goal is to provide 100 meals to the to the community mm -hmm. once a week well that was a realistic goal set by me so <laughs> now we move to 300 meals wow on either on a thursday or wednesday afternoon at two o'clock and we'd see hundreds of kids mm -hmm. lining up Oh. running up the road for a meal and whenever i walk in the road it's like uncle we know you're going to distribute again so there's there's also a need for that so that's mm. why we so mm. feeling strong about the feeding objective and nourishing these children interesting we'll be right back
what an interesting compilation of pictures and various things about what this young man is doing. So like, I know we spoke about the success and what you're proud of that you've done, you know, which one of them was about starting the organization. So what has been a challenge, you know, for you? Um, I know you, you've repeated it's not easy, it's not easy. But still, I, what I heard as well was you were saying, you know, you're excited about what you're doing and sometimes you've been overloaded but what are some of the problems you've had to deal with as an MPO and how have you managed to overcome them? Um, we don't, I wouldn't say that we have problems with people but in the organization sometimes with volunteers we okay. do have a little niches and then you have to step up as the leader of the organization and just get everything together again and deal with the issue but whenever we um, face a challenge or if we will face a challenge in the future we deal with it constructively and the the what my part of my vision is also not to focus on the problems because when i'm going to focus on the problems i'm going to lose track of the mm. goal for the organization so i'm grateful to work with an amazing team of volunteers and the board they they're always there they are committed um so we don't spend 90% of our time dealing with problems and situations. We spend 90% of our time on uplifting the country, mm. getting donors in. And for me, that's something that I'm really grateful for. That's um, interesting. You know, you mentioned there about do you have to step up in terms of leadership? And I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, it's only 17. So how have you managed, you know, to... Um, lead successfully and I'm sure some of your volunteers what's their age range from so what age youngest the youngest one is 15 years 15? old and the eldest one is 18 or 19 okay years old. oh okay so you're older than them I'm, okay. I'm younger than <laughs> most of them oh you're younger than most of them oh okay that was why I went okay 18 and okay I see now what yeah, you mean so okay 16. so the youngest is how old I'm 15 years 15, old. 15, okay. Ah, so how do you handle the older ones, you know, in terms of leadership, you, I, you know, role? I think most of them have an understanding to what volunteering is. Mm. And they, they have a passion for working in the community. So okay. when they come to the organization, it's execution for them to uplift and to assist the organization and volunteer their time. So it was also key for me to find the, the right people to work with us that had an understanding to what volunteers. How did you find them? I started out with a few friends. Okay. And because they knew me, they knew my And passion. they believed in your in my vision. vision. Mm -hmm. So sadly, some of them had left, but mm. I've also part of my journey and as a leader, I had to make peace that people leave their oh, yeah. time yeah. and mm -hmm. the season. Mm. So there's constantly new people coming and people asking to work with us. So that's a and good your thing. board are they young people as well? What age one, range are your board? One of them is in the twenties, and one okay. of them is in in the fifties. Oh, so you have that matured board, yeah. you know, which yeah. is good as well. So you've got a good mix. Yes, we do. We okay, and male, people. female. This what we there are only two males in the audience. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why is that? I, I don't. Know. We're still searching for <laughs> the, the males. So there you go, guys. If you need somewhere to volunteer, LTF is the place to volunteer. Okay. <laughs> so you, what are some of the qualities for you as a person? I know you're a very shy person and you've won a few awards and recognition, you know, in the past years, well won, you know, through um, various other organizations. So what qualities do you think has worked for you in running your NPO? I think um, planning is one of them. Okay. It's very key for me to plan and people who think that I'm crazy but I would sit and tell my friends, guys, what are you doing in July month? And I would have a whole plan what I'll be doing in July mm. and people's like, why are you planning? <laughs> so planning is key mm. for me. Okay. Consistency is also key for me. Right. And then also I need to be committed to what I do. Mm. So even on the days when when it won't be pleasant, I need to pitch up because I can't just run away from everything. So what um, motivates you as an individual? Um, what keeps you going? I never thought of that. I, uh -huh. just, I just wake up and do, do what's expected from me. Right. 
so yeah i think yeah just to be a better version of no myself you. and also to be a role model to others mm. so yeah be a role model to my siblings and wow i'm and sure your parents will be very proud of you yes they, I but probably they don't understand some of where or maybe are they both involved in the community in any way my mom works a lot so okay. she's not actively involved right. but i would when she gets up gets home i would mm -hmm. um, share information mm -hmm. what's to happen mm -hmm. in the organization and who's going to donate mm -hmm. and i think every time when someone donates something i would just jump up so i do share okay. what's happening Help in the so what do you enjoy most about running LTF? Um, what I enjoy the most is being active in sourcing the donations and also okay. meeting the donors and also being active in the in the feeding queues and on the programs. I enjoy that the most. I enjoy engaging with the children. I enjoy engaging with the volunteers and just planning projects. I just love sitting up there at o'clock the night and <laughs> thinking of what can we do next or who can I contact next. Do you so, sleep? I do sleep. Okay, good. <laughs> because I'll be worried if you don't. <laughs> because there's a lot, yeah. yeah okay. I love okay. things done, so I do sleep, don't worry. <laughs> so, yeah. so what what do you enjoy least then, if there's any? Maybe there's nothing, you know, about um, your yeah, being, being running I think I a young NPO. Thing. Okay. Far, okay. Mind, <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So now let me now go on to how you know you you said uh, obviously before you even started were you a volunteer somewhere? How does one become a volunteer? And you're working with volunteers. How does if somebody is in the community say, you know what, I want to become a volunteer? How does one become a volunteer? I think, I think so I'll start with that one first. Social media is so key. There's so okay. many organizations mm -hmm. and people popping up and looking mm -hmm. for volunteers. And we are one of the organizations mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. looking for volunteers. So really, you need to search for organizations and follow them. And normally people share things on social media and then you can apply. And organizations really need volunteers to execute. We rely on volunteers to come and package things to help with distribution. And yeah, for me, before the formation of the organization, I worked with a soup kitchen in my community okay. and also um, shadowing at another organization. And okay. I learned a lot from them and I'm so grateful for the opportunity that they provided me with. And look, I, look at me now, not that I'm brilliant, but yeah. I achieved mm -hmm. and I'm daily achieving things. So awesome. I'm thankful. And I think that's where, you know, even though you're still less than a year, like, you know, um, you are now, you still have a lot um, going for you and you still have a lot to learn, I would say, with others. So are you working in collaboration with any MPO at the moment? Currently, we are not working okay. in collaboration, but if there are organizations that approaches us to mm. work in collaboration, we would look into the project or the idea and then we make a decision from there so we also do make an informed decision so mm. we don't just say yes to anything okay and it ends up failing at the end of the mm. day so i look at it constructively what are the pros and the cons so do you have any of this um yes i do okay which <laughs> I, is i do baking okay do sell cupcakes and oh cakes to oh you bake and do all that as well yes yeah, so okay apart from the organization i do bake and okay. sell cupcakes and yeah ah, okay and do you have any role models um i wouldn't no i, no. I don't think so you don't you don't have anybody that you look up to um, that might not know you but that you say oh okay you know what I will, I have, it's always good to have role models. They so might not know. There is one person mm -hmm. that I look okay. up to in the NPO sector okay. before I started the organization. Right. Right. And her name is Lucinda. Okay. So her work is just so amazing that mm. she does. She mm. worked in Lavendale. Okay. And she works with child, child protection. Right, right. And yeah, so I look up to her work and it's always great following what she does. Okay, well, we'll just have a break. Just now, we'll be right back. So, La 
Nick, um, you know, at the beginning we were speaking about some of the problem. We didn't go into it in, in, in a township or in an area, you know, like Delft, where crimes and things like that are high. I don't want to talk about the problems, but what do you think are some of the solutions, you know, to some of the challenges experienced by, you know, young people or children or women in a place like Delft? I think that in our community there's a lack of role models. Right. So there's a lack of people that standing up and say that I want to make a difference mm. or I want to be the difference. Mm. So I think that our community needs more young leaders and young people to stand up and say, but this is not what we want for our community. We want to see the change and you can also be the change. And not that I want to um speak highly of myself but I can feel proud of the work that I'm doing that some child looks up to me mm. some child sees me as a role model and even if it's that one child even if it's that one person it will make a difference it will have a ripple effect so mm. if that child mm. looks up to you and copies your good habits mm. and then the next person would look up to that child so I think that we need to have, we need more young leaders, we need mm. active leaders, because some people, I'm not speaking bad of anyone, some people speak a lot. So we need people that can speak, that can walk, walk the, the talk. talk. <laughs> so we need young leaders mm. that can walk the talk, that can stand up and say, this is not mm. what I want for my community, I want to be the change, and they, they, uh, they can always happen change. Even if it's through one person, through a group of people, you can make a difference. So Delft needs more young leaders. I, I like that. I, I really like that. Um, although, you know, in your earlier reply to my role model question, you didn't have any. So can I tie that in now to say um, that you could think of at that time? Is it because there was none, you know, for you, you know, at that time? I mean, for you, I don't yeah. know, you, you say what I mean? Yeah, I understand mm. the question, mm -hmm. Mama K. So I never looked up to someone in the community because I never knew of people that you that reached uh, success because what yeah. happens when someone reach, reaches success, they would move out of the community. Mm. So we also need people mm. that is successful to stay in the community because the children need you, the youth need you because if they see a teacher, if they see a doctor walking down the, st the street, they would say that, but I want to be a doctor, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a lawyer. So what happens is the people move out and the kids right. don't get to see right. the positive but, role yeah, models. I, see. I now get what you're saying and that's, how do we change that? Um, because if somebody like you is, well, I don't know, in 10, 15 years, do you see yourself continuing to stay whatever success level you are? In Delft. Back then I was like, oh, I need to move out of Delft. It's mm. not a good place. Mm -hmm. It's just mm. gangsterism and mm. things like that. Mm. But now my vision has changed. Mm. It's like I need to stay in Delft. Okay. I want to be in Delft. I want to buy a house in Delft mm. because I can't imagine myself living in another area mm. and mm. running an organization in Delft. I want the people to see what I do, to see my successes so that they can look up to it and right. Not to brag or to boast, mm -hmm. but, but to use it yeah. as a as motivation. A, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. So, are you right now ready to play that role of being a role model for an 80 year old child that must say, you know what? Can I, you know, can you mentor me? Can you, you know, are you ready? Do I, you think you've got. I think I yeah. am. Okay. We, we all have niches mm. and we, mm -hmm. we work on it daily, mm. but I think I am. To, okay. to mentor so, someone younger than me. Okay. So, yeah. So, I might be coming back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, because, you know, like you said, it's about walking the talk. It's about, you know, you, there will be another young seven year old or eight year old younger like who probably does not see, you know, things and felt the way you felt, you know, at one point that, you know what, I want to get out of this area. There's too much problems, there's too much issue, but now you're saying your mindset has changed. You're thinking, okay, I, I want to be able to leave here, to settle here, and to turn around, you know, the image 
you know, the portrayal of the area. Um, so you're stepping forward live on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and my, my journey with leadership, mm. it's, it's something that I've been actively, actively involved in. Mm. And I think how I got to this position of forming this organization and where the vision started was because the people would always tell me that you will be successful one day, you'll right. reach your goals. And I was, it never went to my head. And when well, I actually, they, they were affirmative words people were telling you as well. Yes, and because I was that like, is important. If no, if you don't get those people telling you that, you might not have that confidence to take some of yeah. the bold steps you've taken. Yeah, because so, they are bold steps. So now, I mm. when I sat back and thought of it, and so, but these people are actually looking up to me. So yeah. why don't I use it? Why don't I use the platform mm. and also just mm. walk the talk and mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm sure the future has a lot planned for you. Talking about the future, which is kind of my last <laughs> formal question, because I know time is going. Um, what kind of future would you like for our African youth? I think um, the future for our African youth is I, we need to see more opportunities for our youth. We need mm. to see more resources resources made available for them okay. because because the culture of our communities is that like only those group of people get to achieve that mm. so like there should be more um people of color standing up and say but i can also do that and also the sense of um people more resources being available for our black communities, communities and disadvantaged yeah. young ones Okay, well, I hope, you know, we keep getting that. This is still part of that last question, which is still about the future and your, you know, for you. So now, what dream do you personally have for yourself? What do you want to do when you finish? Okay, so school? when hopefully next year I'll be matriculating mm. school and then mm -hmm. I'll be looking at studying at university, obtaining a, a degree in education. For okay. now, I'm looking at okay. studying education. Okay. So yeah, that's that's one of my Do you dreams. know which university yet? Um, I was saying like University of Stellenbosch, but okay. when I looked at it, uh, I live in Delft, that's far, mm, that's out of reach. So something closer to home that I can okay. still be working right. in the community and yeah. travel to and from and not live too Ooh, far. You're so passionate about Delft. <laughs> That's yeah. interesting. That's 17. So now let's go back to finish with LTF. What future would you like to see for LTF? Wow. It's, <laughs> I think like it's good that you asked that question, Mama K, because 10 years from now, I'd like to look back at this interview and reflect on it. Mm. So one of the dreams or the goals for the organization that I have is to open a facility in Delft where we can develop the children where we can um, open more resources to the children of Delft and also provide provide them with the facilities to come and do mm. the school, the homework with the assistance of volunteers, make use of internet facilities, um, play facilities, a, a safe environment mm. for kids to play. That is one of my goals for the organization. So wow. I hope 10 years later, I'll look back at this interview I'm and say, sure. I achieved Where am it. I? And you tick the box. Yeah. No, I'm sure you will probably definitely achieve it. Because like you said, it's about setting goals and you set that goal for yourself. And it's about having the right people and the right mix, which, you know, through the volunteers and, you know, the, the, the mission of your organization, I think you 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 have a lot to be proud of, and you're getting there for an organization that's still very young. <laughs> yeah, so people say like young. you're so young and you're so yeah. passionate about yeah. organization. I'm like, it's unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm just in awe of you know who and what you're doing, and the fact that you're you're still doing it successfully in the sense that you're still saying, okay, I want to educate myself because you need that as well yeah. you know to grow because somebody you know could just say ah, you know what i'm just going to focus on this and figure it out but no you still want to educate yourself build on the skills you have yeah. and i just can only wish you all the very best so there's a lot you've said in there and i'm so um 
glad that we've had this conversation and thank you for sharing your story. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Mama thank Kay. you so I'm much. Humble. And we're wishing you all the very, very best for the future. But before I go on to all that, and this is me jumping the gun, I normally do it after this bit. In closing, what final words or thoughts do you want to share with our viewers, especially our young ones? Okay, um, I would say to every colored child, every black child out there that your, your dream matters. What you mm. want to achieve in life, it matters. Don't give up on your dream because of your circumstances, because the community that you come from. It doesn't mean you come from Delft, you come from Kailicha, Google it to wherever you are based. It, it does not define who you are. Mm. Stand up, be bold and take your space because we need young leaders to stand up and take space. And yeah, so never give up on your dreams. I mean, I've worked on this vision since 2019 and, I achieve, and I'm daily achieving it successfully. So never give up on your dream. Work towards it and be humble and stay grounded. Wow. Deep for a young man of 17. <laughs> I'm still like, wow. There you go, guys. Well, your dream matters. And not my word, his words, to stay humble, to stay grounded. Um, we've spoken about leadership, about, you know, what you do and how to become a volunteer. And the fact that we need more role models, you know, in an area like Delft and other places like Guguletu and other communities that, yeah, is rife with crimes and all sorts. But it's about, like you said, it shouldn't be about your environment. Yeah, definitely. It should not define you. And yeah, your dream matters. Your dream has mattered. And thank you again. And we can only but wish LTF, the Lahik Tofa Foundation, all the very best for the future. And we'll be watching the space. I know you'll do very well. Thank you, Mama Kay, for having me. I it's know. An absolute pleasure. I'm glad you've enjoyed and I'm sure we'll be back again to follow up on some of your projects, you know, in whatever form, maybe, Definitely. you know, the conversation carries on. So yeah, this definitely. is just the beginning of the conversation. So thank you once again, Lahik. It's a pleasure. And all the best with your exams. Once thank you. you started. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> all the best with your exams. Okay, guys. Well, that's all we've got time for. Remember, God is love. Till next time, this is Mama Kate. Love you guys. Stay blessed.